Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson, and what follows is an article entitled An Introduction to Vintage Guitar Picks, written by Joe Macy, published here in part at his request and in full by Heavy Repping. If you would like any more information on vintage picks, please visit Joe's YouTube channel at the link in the description, or visit heavyrepping.com for the complete text-based article. Part 1. Vintage Guitar Picks For over 100 years, a mind-boggling diversity of guitar picks have been commercially available to the general public, yet remain largely unknown and unseen to most guitarists and guitar collectors today. This is understandable considering most picks, branded, having a logo, or not, have a period of retail availability under 10 years, with many styles being offered for a few years or less. Obscure as they may be, there are literally thousands of different vintage picks, and those shown here were acquired starting in 1991. Obviously due to space limitations, we'll cover just a few of the subcategories, and get a glimpse of the remarkable diversity of plectrums as they've passed through decades of musical history. There are two main categories of picks, those with a logo and those without a logo. Among those with logos, they are further divided into the pre-print impress logo era occurring before 1950 and the post-print ink logo era occurring after 1950. As with most general rules covering vintage picks, there are exceptions, but only a few. They will be noted. As history would have it, there are of course no rock and roll picks from the pre-1950 impressed, no ink, logo period of pick production. But there are many artist picks from the pre-print era who were incredibly famous in their day. The artist picks of rock and roll that band collectors acquired today started in the 1970s, and while cool for many reasons, in their own right, as a group they fail by comparison to vintage picks in terms of their shape, colour and overall visual appeal. A bold statement, yes, but self-evident in the photographs that follow. Granted, there are individual exceptions. The year 1950 also serves to divide the golden age of guitar picks from the post-golden age era. Will Hoover, author of the book Picks, describes the golden age as those picks manufactured from American-made celluloid. The last celluloid plant here in America shut down in 1949. Existing supplies could safely be assumed to have stocked the market for another year, hence the role of the year 1950 is again a point of demarcation in vintage pick history. Prior to 1980, commercial guitar picks were branded with logos that included just four main categories. Artists, guitar companies, wholesale distributors and their name brands, and the names of the guitar manufacturers who made everyone else's picks. Between 1980 and 2000, those categories expanded, and after 2000, those categories exploded to include every conceivable natural, cultural, and commercial theme imaginable. As with vintage guitars, vintage picks are also fixed in time and cannot be redone, changed, or remade, which lends to their innate authenticity. The oldest extant example of a guitar pick thus far discovered goes back to 1881 and is in fact not a guitar pick but a mandolin pick. The Crystal Faro is the patriarch of all picks to follow thereafter. But this begs the question of how do we know the history or age of a pick? For the Crystal Faro it is explained later on in the legend. The most common methods of authentication include patents, trademarks, musical instrument catalogues, jobbers, and cross-correlation with pick guards, which are also made of the same celluloid picks are made of. Know the year a guitar with a distinct tortoise pick guard was produced, and you know the period of time in which picks made of the same celluloid also appeared. Also useful are cross-correlations by distinct shape, style, and colour patterns. The memories of elders who served in the musical instrument industry have also clarified previously difficult to identify picks. The identity, age and origin of an estimated 5% of vintage picks are relegated to methods of extrapolation subject to error, and to fix them within plus or minus 10 years would be considered a good guess. 
Fortunately, this probability of error mainly occurs with unbranded or no logo picks with characteristics that cannot be cross-correlated with other vintage picks, so their actual numbers are small. No preference has been given to any particular brand. Fender and Gibson alone could have commanded this entire article as they garner the greatest attention as well as having a remarkable range of vintage pick types, but our focus here is diversity. The category of guitar brands in general is given first highlight, but it should be noted that all the other categories have a near equal or greater range of diverse styles, with some far more attractive than anything offered by the guitar companies.